Good morning, staff. Today, the 7th of October, we are celebrating the feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. The use of beads as an aid to prayer has its origins in the dim distant past. If uh, any of you have Muslim friends or know something of the Muslim faith and tradition, you would not be surprised when you see that as Muslims walk along they are fingering beads or when they're sitting down uh, quietly and I understand or have been told that uh, when they do that they are really praising God. Now in our Christian tradition, our Christian faith, uh, in saying or praying the rosary, we are recalling the mysteries of our Christian faith and we are praising God for choosing Mary to be intimately involved in Jesus her son in those saving mysteries revealing God's plan for our salvation. The rosary <coughs> with which we are familiar contains mainly 55 beads on 50 of the bees we are uh, talking to Mary. On the five beads we are talking to God our Father and on those five beads we also pause to praise God Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So in saying or praying the rosary we're talking, we are talking about vocal prayer. And vocal prayer means that we are talking to a person. Conversation with anyone reflects very much our relationship. If I'm talking to a stranger, I use different language, or there are different expressions in that language, different from talking to someone who is close to me, someone whom I love. The point I'm making is that vocal prayer presumes an existing relationship. Praying the rosary is a better expression than saying the rosary. Praying the rosary means it's something very personal. In fingering the five large beads of the rosary, we are speaking to God whom Jesus reveals as Father. Is my prayer reflecting my relationship with God, Father? Am I speaking from the heart as a child does to a father whom we trust. In fingering the other beads, the 50 beads of the rosary, we are speaking to Mary. Does it reveal my relationship to Mary as mother? You and I are called to be educators, teachers. And when we become more aware of our privileged vocation in forming young minds and hearts, I believe we are challenged by the words of Pope St. Paul VI in his letter to teachers all around the world, he said, the best teachers are those who are witnesses. If 
I am endeavouring to teach children to pray the rosary. The question I have to ask myself, do the children see in me someone who really believes what I am saying? Do they see those words as prayer? So what is essential to teaching the rosary is devotion to the Mother of God. That's something that the rosary presupposes. True devotion, sincere devotion to Mary. The celebration of today's feast, Our Lady of the Rosary, has a historical origin and we understand that the feast was instituted by Pope St. Pius V on the anniversary of the naval battle of Lepanto in 1571 when it is understood that the Christians secured a victory, conclusive victory, because of their prayer to Mary uh, invoking the help of the Mother of God through the praying of the Rosary. So that's the origin of the feast. But today's feast is an invitation to all to recall the mysteries that reveal to us in the, the Word of God, the Word that Mary treasured, and in those mysteries, we, with Mary, are praising God. As we take up the Gospel story, we are aware that Mary was intimately involved in the birth, the life, the death, the suffering, burial, resurrection and ascension of Jesus. So with Mary we pray, my soul glorifies the Lord, for he who is mighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Through many generations, especially when many people were not able to read, The recitation of the family rosary was a very powerful way of handing on the Christian faith, the teaching of the apostles, handing on the mysteries which involve Mary, God's plan for our salvation and happiness. The recitation of the creed at the beginning of the rosary is part of that tradition. So the rosary and devotion to Mary has played a very important part in the life, the mission, and the teaching of the church. As we recall each mystery of the rosary, be it the joyful, the sorrowful, or the glorious mysteries, or the mysteries of light, <coughs> we become conscious that they are rooted in the living Word of God. And that is why I'm saying to you that the Rosary has indeed played a very important part in handing on the living Word of God. If we take up the Acts of the Apostles, we find there the friends of Jesus gathered together in Jerusalem as he instructed them to do so to await the coming of the Holy Spirit and we find Mary amongst them and that is a beautiful picture of Mary's role in the church Mary is a part of the, the body of Christ the community of the faithful so when the church prays, 
Mary prays with us. When we recite the rosary, when we pray the rosary, we are talking to Mary. But in the liturgy of the church, the Eucharist and sacraments, and the morning and evening prayer of the church, Mary is praying with us. So I invite you now to join with me in prayer. And you notice the wording is addressed to God. also includes our understanding of Mary's role in the life of the church. And to each intercession I ask you to respond after me, may the Virgin Mary intercede for us. I will lead you in that response. Let's now praise God the Father who chose Mary as the mother of his son and wanted all generations to call her blessed. With confidence we pray together, may the Virgin Mary intercede for us. Father, you have looked on the Virgin Mary and made her the mother of mercy. May those who are in danger experience the depth of her love together. May the Virgin Mary intercede for us. You call Mary to be the mother in the house of Jesus and Joseph. Through her prayers help all mothers to make their home places of love and holiness. Together may the Virgin Mary intercede for us. You gave Mary the strength to stand at the foot of the cross and made her radiant with joy in the resurrection. Raise up the sorrowful and transform their lives with hope together. May the Virgin Mary intercede for us. Mary was your faithful handmaid who treasured your words in her heart. Through her intercession, let us become true disciples of your Son devoted to his service together. May the Virgin Mary intercede for us. Father, you call the Virgin Mary and crowned her Queen of Heaven. May the dead enter your kingdom and rejoice with your saints forever together. May the Virgin Mary intercede for us. Now I invite you to Pray with me the prayer, the Hail Mary. But notice that the prayer consists of two parts. In the first part, we have the greeting of the angel from the Gospel story. We have the greeting of Elizabeth when Mary visited her cousin in her pregnancy. In the second part of the prayer, we have the words of the people of God addressing Mary by her greatest title, Mother of God. So together let us pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen.